Coming up on Up at Noon, did you pre-order Nintendo Switch? Because we did. Funko and Playmobil are teaming up, but it's not as great as it sounds, and Xbox pool floats just in time for winter, unless you're Australian. All that and more right now on Up at Noon Live. Hello and welcome to Up at Noon. Please get brighter. Slowly. Light. Gradually. Come forth from the shadows of darkness Come and on, enlighten okay. us. There you are. There it is. Oh, my, I missed you so much. Uh, this is up at noon. Uh, usually it's live, but this week we pre-taped it because we're doing weird stuff. Are we allowed to say it? Yeah, let's do it. Should we save it. it for the end or we should tease it right now? Let's just talk about it right now. All right. Tonight we're in Los Angeles uh, at the red carpet premiere for Triple uh, X Return of Xander. Cage. Cage. Yes. XX3. The, yes. The, uh, uh, the end of the Trixilogy. You know what? If uh, yeah, if it wasn't already one of those things that I wasn't too worried about, I would be very worried about getting fired for Googling things with the letters triple X in them at work. Yeah. Uh, Max and I are hosting the uh, red carpet live stream for Triple X Return of Xander Cage tonight in Los Angeles, which you can tune into on 6.30 uh, Pacific Time or 9.30 Eastern Time on uh, Facebook dot com slash IGN, YouTube dot com slash IGN, and IGN dot com slash nothing. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, we're going to be uh, interviewing celebrities and doing all sorts of cool stuff. But we decided to get together a show for you guys on a, a shoestring budget and just a few days' work. Um, so let's see how it goes. Yeah. Max, tell them where they can watch this show. You can watch the show on all kinds of things. You can watch it on the lamp, on the, the different lava lamp. I'm just kidding. You watch it on IGN.com, the PS4, Xbox One apps, Apple TV app, Roku app, Twitch app, Facebook app, YouTube.com slash IGN. Anything that has IGN on it that does the IGN videos, we're probably on it. Yeah. Whether or not you want that. If you don't want it, I'm sorry. Just close your eyes and cover your ears and eventually it will go away in like yeah. an hour. Um, normally, we're live. We're not today, which is why we're being this weird. <laughs> but if we were live, you could use the hashtag up at noon to talk to us on Twitter and we'd, we'd answer your things, but we won't be doing that this week. You can still use it. We'll just we just won't read it. Yeah, you can go out outside Not until it. next week. We'll read it in a week. <laughs> you can go outside at night and talk to the stars. Yeah, they're up there. Anyway, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Wendy's. Uh, they've got they've got hamburgers. Mm-mm-mm. Not their tagline. Not again. their tagline again. again. That. Um, they got the double stack four for four. It's a, a dumb amount of food for four bucks. I'm uh, so hungry right I, now. Yeah, oh, that looks so good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is not me plugging them. I'm just always We're very, very hungry. hungry. And though that looks really delicious. Yep. I love delicious treats and good food. And man, I'm very hungry. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, <laughs> I'm also hungry for a brand new console that was announced last week or revealed in its official capacity, the Nintendo Switch. We found out about it in October last year. Uh, last week, Nintendo did a very late press conference uh, around 9.30 at night our time. I had the pre and post show here at IGN. Uh, we all frantically tried to pre-order it. Um, and then the dust settled a little bit. And it's been a week now, so we're going to talk about a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, how we feel about uh, it a week later. But second of all, sort of, you know, yeah. what, how the launch lineup stacks up. This is uh, one of the biggest, ex- probably, announcements in video game history was seeing that brand new Zelda trailer last, year, about last week and then finding out that it's out March 3rd, which is the same day as the Nintendo, Wii, uh, the Nintendo Switch, which means this might be one of the most impressive, incredible, just grandiose launch games ever made. Has a Zelda game ever been a launch title? Yes, Twilight Princess. But that was already available on, was that was that a Wii launch title? So that was a Wii game, that was a, basically a GameCube game two weeks after it came to Wii. So it was sort of staggered in the way they ported it. Nintendo okay. tricked people into doing that so that they could buy a Wii on launch day, which we all did. Uh, and with that, we got a bunch of other stuff. We got... Uh, Let's see, weird stuff like Elibits. We got Wii Sports, obviously. Yeah. It was a whole, just a slew of strange things. There was a bunch of little apps and stuff so, like that. So that being said, I think that kind of bodes well for the, the state of the Switch if, if it's got a Zelda for a launch title. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, so, that being said, it doesn't have a whole lot else for launch. Now, Nintendo's trying something kind of interesting here in that they're staggering out a lot of their releases throughout the rest of the year. So I think what Reggie fils said is basically one of the things that they're trying to solve with this is that, A, You immediately know what the system does and who it's for. You get it. It's a console you can bring anywhere. Got it. Thumbs up. Nailed it. Two, uh, I I, I did A and two, like in Home Alone. Um, Two, uh, Buzz's girlfriend. Buzz's girlfriend. Woof. Uh, Two, they want to have a steady stream of games throughout the year. And the only way to do that is to sort of like have one a month, one every couple weeks, a couple stuff here, a couple things there. Third parties helping out here and there, but not entirely so much like crazy. But uh, all in all, there are five games. Five. Coming to the Nintendo Switch launch. 
Um, one of them is Zelda, which could be one of the greatest games ever made. But that's only one of five games. Yeah, but the rest of them, the other four are undoubtedly like, they are huge, you know, AAA. Uh, some of them are great third-party titles. They're all really just big. No? No, not really. But before we get into that, I want to take you guys back a little bit because uh, we can't talk about the Nintendo Switch launch, which is hopefully going to uh, prevail in the console wars and do really well. I don't know if it'll topple the charts with everything else, but I think at very least, the plan is that it does better than the Wii U. So let's go back in time a few years and look at the actual Wii U launch and see what that launched with. Now, I just told you that the Nintendo Switch is launching with five games. The Wii U, if you want to pull it up, launched with 32 games. 32. Now, in red... And bold, you know, large letters here, I outlined some of the bigger uh, sort of, I would say, AAA franchises. Not necessarily right. AAA games, but stuff like, at launch, you have an Assassin's Creed game. It's a port. Batman Arkham City, which is the armored edition, had some new stuff in it. Uh, Black Ops, so obviously you had Activision there. FIFA, you had EA. Uh, Madden, also EA, NBA. Uh, more sports games there. We've got Mass Effect 3 Special Edition, which started with this sort of motion comic that caught you up in the series. Uh, also Zombie U, which was Ubisoft kind of going all in on this new exclusive thing. Same with Rabbids Land, which is kind of a smaller title. But, you know, you get exclusive games from third-party developers. Uh, in purple there, I put New Super Mario Bros. U and Nintendo Land, which were the big sort of tentpole first-party games. Uh, all of these games were priced around $50, some a little, a little less. But 32 games. I really like the, the sort of spread of uh, sort of indie games there. Uh, Nano Assault was a really awesome game. Mighty Switch Force, really cool sort of like smaller tier games from uh, smaller publishers like Way Forward. Um, and all in all, it launched like you had a you had Super Mario Brothers, which was multiplayer and co-op. Yeah. Uh, you had Nintendo Land, which was you know sort of the party game, the sort of their answer to you know. Uh, Wii Sports and yeah. stuff like that, Wii Sports Resort. And you had this sort of slew of like, even stuff like Darksiders 2, if you're looking for a Zelda-like game. There was a good sort of like, Chasing Aurora, Epic Mickey, there was a good range of stuff there. Um, there was also a bunch of duds, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff that kind of had been out there for a while, so yeah. people kind of knew what they were getting into, and you know, maybe they skipped it on other consoles yep. and they yep. stuck around and they got it. But we, ha we had stuff like Your Shape Fitness, <clears throat> which was obviously trying to recapture the, the casual thing. Sure. Uh, Sing Party. Um, Tank Tank Tank, which no one really played, which was, it was fine, it was okay. Uh, Ninja Gaiden, which is like a weird choice. They, so the good sort of a mix of like hardcore games, casual games, good third party stuff, good first party stuff. Sure. It was actually a pretty strong launch. Yeah. Aside from the fact that looking at it now, you realize uh, third parties really supported it then and then kind of never again. Yeah. Um, and the problem with that, obviously, we talk about this all the time, is that there's this vicious cycle of Nintendo uh, lines up third parties, but what they get is sort of like leftovers from what the other consoles are getting. Nintendo fans don't want to pay 50 or $60 for leftovers. They don't buy the third parties. Third parties go, we're not making any money on this platform. We're not going to support it again. Sure. So it's that a weird said, gamble. It did seem like, you know, third parties were on board with the Wii yeah. U at launch. And now let's let's compare that to the launch lineup for the Switch. Yeah. <clears throat> right off the bat, way less text. Uh, in purple here, we have the two ones that are being developed exclusively by Nintendo. Um, Breath of the Wild is not even a platform exclusive. That's actually also coming to Wii U day and date. IGN has an article about the differences between those two games. Not a whole lot, uh, ironically. Oh, weird. Oh, they put us right on the... Hey, that is so we're cute! On the Switch! Look at that! Oh, man. I wish we'd be able to watch this show on the Switch, but Nintendo announced that there won't be a lot of multimedia apps at launch, so yeah. hopefully someday the IGN app will be on there. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh... So one two switch is the other big one. I really feel like this should have been a packing game. Completely, I'm really right? excited about it. This is yeah. the game where you can milk the cow. Yep, you do a lot you of do, talking. You do just like do that. You know, it's gonna be fun. Week. I like you know dumb <laughs> dumb party games like that. Yep. I have a lot of parties at my house. I think it's perfect for that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm excited to have that. Uh, it's also portable. It makes a ton of sense. That said, it should absolutely have been a pack in. Yeah, especially because I think it's the perfect way to show off what the. Uh, what the Joy-Con left and right are doing. Yeah. The new like HD 4D rumble thing they're trying out. Um, there's, It's got something like 25 mini games, I think, which they've really only showed a handful of. But I don't really know if that's gonna justify a $49.99 price point. Like it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. So we've also got Just Dance 2017. Now Ubisoft said straight up, we are supporting the Switch. We're excited for it. Here's Just Dance, uh, a dance game, which most of you will probably skip. Steep, which is always online, and they had a weird quote today saying that you'll be able to play it in other rooms in your house. So to play Steep, you'll have to connect to Wi-Fi networks, I assume, unless there's what? something, some sort of offline exclusive mode in this game. And the third one is Rayman Legends uh, Definitive Edition, or Deluxe Edition, which we saw at the around the launch window of the Wii U. It had Mario and uh, Luigi in it as uh, sort of 
uh, exclusive skins that you could play as in that game. Um, that game came out many, many years ago. Yeah. I adore it. I don't really know if that's really them being like, we're all in on this. I, as far as like Ubisoft goes, they I, I often say that like their their biggest IP is launch title of the game. Yeah. You know, they yeah. are frequently the first one out the gate to be like, hey, a new machine, we're going to throw a bunch of stuff on there. It might be trash. It might be weird experimental stuff. It might be totally memorable. And it might not be. It, it, I mean, let's look. Let's but, look at a let's look at a system that just launched PSVR. Ubisoft was there day, uh, you know, not day and date, but within Eagle the first Flight, few weeks. Eagle Flight, Werewolves, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff right um, off the bat. Yeah, those are, those are like you know original games. Now some of them they had ported over from Oculus or made better versions, definitive versions on PSVR. But uh, to say that like this is so, they're sort of like. Soft, and that's, those are excitement. Those are VR games. They yeah. were also there with uh, with the Vita. You yeah. know, maybe this is maybe this is the tail end of Ubisoft learning their lesson about throwing stuff on on it's possible. launch hardware. But um, it's possible. But I mean, we saw them support uh, PS4 and Xbox One. I'm sure they'll be there for for Scorpio. I yeah. mean, let's see how this, all this pans out. Uh, next time, let's move Skylanders Imaginators. So that's mm -hmm. you know that's a big win for uh, any kid who hasn't played this game yet. The um, there's basically you can you can scan Amiibo and Skylanders directly into the Joy Cons. So that's a pretty cool feature to have something right out the gate on launch day that supports it. Uh, pretty cool, but you know, no Call of Duty or anything like that. Activision yeah. again, sort of soft on the excitement for this thing. I think what's happening with a lot of these scenarios is companies are looking at this thing and they're taking a sort of wait and see approach. Now, obviously, we learned about uh, FIFA from EA. That's their big one. Um, but it's not there at launch. You're going to get that a few weeks later. If you look at the release date late, uh, list down the line, like you're going to get more games. It's going to like come out there. But number five, Super Bomberman R, Konami, Konami is at your launch. Like that's when you're like, no one's really at the party, but uh, like my friend from high school is going to be there. Uh. But what's he been doing since? Oh man, he borrowed a bunch of money from people. He didn't pay them back. He went to jail. Like Konami's not really like the. I love Bomberman. Bomberman's gonna be a great game. I can't wait to play it. But Konami at launch as your top five, like when you had eight people to choose from on MySpace. Okay, let's be. Just, one of them is Konami. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, this is a really, this is a really, this yeah. is a garbage launch lineup. But there's Zelda. There's Zelda. There's Zelda. There's Zelda. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like you're gonna play this game for probably 50, 60 hours. I know I am. I'm gonna be able to play it on the go. Like this game comes out a week. Uh, before PAX, so that's a, a, f a cross country flight, like right off the bat. If we're going to that show, like we're gonna yeah. be on that plane playing Zelda, like that's, that's pretty awesome. awesome. Also, you showed me an image the other day that was uh, comparing the sizes of open world games, and it was just a bunch of squares overlapping each other. Yeah. And the one for it was like the one for Skyrim was like this, and then the one for Breath of the Wild was like that. And I was yep. like, wow, these are exciting squares. That's crazy. Yep. Um, but yeah, that being said, I don't want to be too negative about the Switch. Uh, I don't either. This is, no. this is an incredibly sparse launch lineup compared to the Wii U. Uh, that said, it's also got a Zelda that we're all really excited about. Yeah, we've also uh, heard some terminology from them sort of being like that there's this like kind of launch window, launch path, like their launch might last six or seven months, you know? Yeah. If they're gonna kind of trickle things out over the next few months and that's okay. I would rather have sort of like a couple of games every few weeks than 32 on day one and nothing for six months. Yeah, so, totally, totally with you. Also, yeah. I mean, it, it gives us something to look forward to at, uh, at E3, so that's good news. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Um, did you pre-order a Switch? I did, and you did too. I did too. Which I is really interesting. I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. It was kind of weird. It so just what? Kinda, just kind of came out, you know? So it it's been, happened. It's, today's been seven days since uh, the world premiere of sort of like finding out everything about it. Um, and I want to talk about a little bit about sort of how that night went in terms of excitement, how you felt the next day, and how you feel a week later. Yeah. Because I know that that night, you were probably pretty hot on it. You obviously pre-ordered one the second you could. No, I was I was kind of lukewarm on it. Honestly, really? I thought that presentation. Um, can I say sucked ass? Yeah, I guess it did. It was it was pretty bad. It was like really like they should have been they should have done like a like an English and Japanese one separately like Sony does. I like thought it was, was a little. It, I I wouldn't say it sucked ass, but it was a little all over the place. Like it got so quiet during Suda Fifty One's presentation. The translator was so like low energy that my stream actually cut out in the middle of it. Yeah, I will um, I will say that the pacing of it was bizarre. Yeah. Um, it was Nintendo's first live event since two thousand twelve. So they're a little rusty with that. Yeah, they're, you know? I mean, they haven't pulled the guitar out in a while yeah. and strummed in front of the crowd. So yeah, uh, um, I think the whole sort of like global launch idea of like skyping into Reggie in New York and then going to Japan and stuff like that. It's it, I I would have rather they produced just like an hour long package Nintendo it, event. Yeah, it seems kind of it, it's weird. It's one of those weird things where I don't know how that took that form. But that said, I, I don't I don't care. That thing is yeah. done. That's in the past. Um, I pre-ordered the thing. I haven't 
I haven't canceled it. It's close yeah. enough that I'm I'm excited about it. Yeah. Uh, I knew what I was going into with this. Like, I mean, obviously, I you know I pay attention to all the, the hardware and the, the speculation and all that stuff. Yep. And uh, I don't think it's a perfect device by any means, but I'm excited about it. It's a new toy. Yeah. Um, one thing uh, I think is really cool about it is it is a second screen uh, because I'm in 2017. I have a massive shortage of screens in my life. I only have um, several tablets scattered about my home and uh, TVs and. Uh, I really I only have like half a dozen things that run Netflix at any given time, so I need something else that actually doesn't run Netflix. That's true. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, but like I, I live with my fiance. Yeah. Um, and uh, we both play games, and she she loves Zelda. She's crazy about Zelda. Um, I also like Zelda, not not as to the same degree, but um, she's like, hey, I want this thing, and I was like, you know, I kind of do too. Yeah. And the fact that like I could be you know, goofing around in Final Fantasy or playing whatever the hell game is out in, in two months. I, you know, play Horizon on, on my PS4 and she'll be hanging out Zelda. with me. And, yeah. like, I... Video games are... They can be incredibly social and they can bring people together or they can be very isolating. And that can be, you know, that can be damaging to a relationship. But the fact that a Switch can be a thing that we're both kind of playing or, you know, she's playing it or I'm playing it... Um, you know, I can, you know, bring it to bed and, and hang out while she's, you know, reading a book or something yeah, or vice awesome. versa. It's totally um, awesome. And then the fact that it's also a social thing for parties. Like the yeah. fact that it's it's not one or the other, I'm I'm kind of into that. And so, if it's underpowered, I don't really care. Yeah, I have a I'm, PS4. Like, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm split on that. Like, I, I've ranted in the past about how I want it to be up to snuff power-wise for the other consoles. Not because I'm like, a, you know, a sort of just like a crazy person when it comes to like, I'm obsessed with you know, having the most powerful gaming devices, but because I know that if there's parity between the systems, it'll get more games easier. Yeah. People will be able to, you know, port things over a lot easier rather than downgrade them. I think Nintendo gambles. They do, um, of course. I think that they also, they ship prototypes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at the 3DS, best-selling thing they've ever done. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It's beautiful. It also has how many iterations, if you're counting the DS. The launch version that looked like a layer cake, the uh, regular version that looked better, that's the XL, the, right. the 2DS. But that's the 3DS. If you're going, that's just if, the 3DS, right. yeah. If, if you're you go going back, back way yeah. further, you're counting the original the original DS that came out with, like, what? Uh, Metroid Prime Hunters, Hunters demo yeah. and Mario 64. And, yeah. and you were like, what is, why does it have two screens? It's weird. And the PSP came at the same time. Yep. Uh, and they iterated on that gradually. And they chipped away at yeah. it. And they were like, this one has Wi-Fi. This one's got a camera. This one's got two cameras. So, this one has 3D, and you're like, and it was that one still played the old games, and I yeah, think that I, that's I think incredibly smart. I think so. We actually haven't seen here and there. We haven't seen a ton of uh, hardware reiterations from them for consoles. We saw like a Wii Mini that was like Canadian exclusive sure, for sure. a while. We saw the uh, the Wii U roughly changed this, uh, stayed the same because why bother? Um, GameCube was pretty much the same. Uh, I think they put out different versions sure. in different countries. Well, I mean, um, we, we saw like a, a different version of the NES. We saw a different yeah. version of the, I mean, the N64 got remodeled. But so my main thing with the Switch is that I pre-ordered it that night. I was ecstatic. I ran out of this room doing that live stream. We were all on our phones and on our, on our, on our, on our computers, just refreshing different sites until we got them, yelling out in the room like, you know, Walmart's up and blah, 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 just getting them all. And I went to bed that night Really excited, really happy about it. And I woke up the next day, and I was like, hey, wait a minute. They didn't tell us how account systems are going to work. They didn't tell us game sizes. They didn't tell us uh, how much a game will have to install. They didn't tell us, uh, you know, sort of like what, what, what other games will be there at launch, what else we'll get to play. There was a lot of questions all of a sudden. So I started getting not cold feet about it, but it started being like, you know what? I rushed to do this because of how difficult it is to buy Nintendo hardware. Yeah. And they know that even though they didn't put all the information out there, including their online scenario, which they're going to start charging for, and then basically loan you NES games and then take them away, uh, I realized that I rushed to pre-order this without having all the information because it's so hard to get their systems that I just wanted to have one locked in no matter what. And yeah. I think they know that that's part of the situation now for people. But yeah. that being said, like, I've gone all week kind of, like, reading more about it. Little sort of details have come out. It was very odd that the next day they did an entire six-hour live stream where more games were revealed, more things were trickled out. It, it seemed odd to not just, like, bombard everyone was, at once with everything. It was poorly messaged. There's obviously, there's still a ton of, like, holes you can poke in it and a yep. bunch of problems it has ahead of time. I'm going into this with kind of lowered expectations, and I think because of that I'm going to come out extra positive. So. Yeah. Um, did you pre-order a Switch? Like, let us know. Are, did you pre-order it? Do you regret it? Are you yeah. excited about it? How are you feeling? Like, um, I think it's, 
really easy to get caught up in the what's good, what's bad, and to argue about it and become this whole kind of politicized thing. But end of the day, it's a fun new toy. Yeah, I do agree. You, do I you think want it or no? We saw no. a lot of hyperbole on both sides. People being like, this is literally the worst thing ever, and they're the dumbest on yeah. earth, and I hate them. And I was like, shut up. Yeah. There's other people being like, this is perfect, shut up, it doesn't need any changes. And I'm like, no, let's find a little wiggle room like on each side here. Yeah. So, But yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, it's so awesome we get to cover a new console here at IGN. Like, um, that's it's just a really fun time to, to work here and to to share that that passion with you guys. So uh, yeah. yeah, thanks for rocking with us. Yeah. And on that note, um, obviously Nintendo Switch is just around the corner, and um, you know we've seen we've seen kind of weird knockoff prototypeish type of stuff uh, trickling out of other parts of the world. Um, but we decided we'd we'd throw our hats into the ring, and um, you know maybe if you're running tight on money, here's a great way to have your own Nintendo Switch on the cheap, right at home. Let's yeah. do it. Uh, number one. Let's start with this piece of garbage. So yeah, just take two-year-old NES controllers and rubber band them around the Wii U gamepad and you are all set. Yeah. You don't need to spend $300 on a Switch. That's crazy. It also plays Zelda. Yeah. So you're good to go. It's awesome. And maybe maybe you can't reach those buttons with those controllers in the way. Go down to the Halloween store and get some of those slip-on plastic witch fingers and you'll be able to reach the <laughs> D-pad and the button's just fine. Number two. Oh man, maybe you got a couple of old Game Boy Advance SP stick sticking around. They're dirt cheap. They're practically giving them away at GameStop now. Just get two of them. Hey, double the screen. Yeah, and maybe they, they don't turn on because you lost the charger. Well, guess what? You can use your imagination. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Imaginations are the best game ever. How about this one? Oh, good. The Every old Kindle. Everyone knows the Nokia N-Gage is a very bad telephone, but books are cool. You think you're a hardcore gamer that needs to play games on hard mode? Try reading sideways. Talking to a telephone like a taco. Twice. <laughs> yes. Oh, Sony fans, we've got one just for you. Everyone knows Sony hands fans hate money, so they have all of these in their drawers. Remember the PSP Go, their least selling system ever that I love because I bought because I buy everything? What if you had two of them and a Vita, their second least selling system? Ah, <laughs> Take Vita. them all together. The wife of the guy from Argentina that they made that musical about. And last but not least, uh, Microsoft fans, we didn't forget about you. If you got two fat old dukes lying around that are weighing down your house and putting holes in the basement, <laughs> grab your Microsoft <laughs> Surface and duct tape them to the side of that. Why don't you put that floppy magnet hinge to the test and strap a couple big dukes to the screen there? And that's a dumb thing we did at work. And now you hate us more. Sorry about that. Sound off in the comments below! Max, tell me about another gigantic ass video game controller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a while back we told you about uh, the Xbox Australia team. I don't know what they do there exactly. They don't make games, they don't make Xboxes. I guess they just make sure that the Xboxes come safely across the ocean onto that island cover and fire and spiders yep. and get past the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> There's a thing called the Great Barrier Reef. Why did they send people there? Anyway, I'm sorry to crap all over Australia. I think they're, I know, I know several Australians and they're lovely people. Uh, 7.5. I have Australian friends, excuse me. Anyway, um, a while ago the Australian Xbox team, uh, they made Xbox onesies. Like somebody, I don't know, was out in the outback pounding brewskis or whatever and they were like, what if we made a uh, long underwear that said Xbox on it? And they were yep. like, why not? We're not doing anything else down here. So they made those. Um, their, their seasons are upside down there, so it's summer there right now. And in honor of Australia Day, they decided to do another wacky thing, which is a giant inflatable Xbox controller. Because. What? Yeah. What? Yes. Look at that thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, So that's the actual size controller on the side. This is, in honor of Australia Day, a Are holiday... Are spider webs in the middle? <laughs> yes, I believe so. <laughs> there are several, uh, several thousand huntsman eggs inside there. Uh-huh. Um, no, uh, yeah, so in honor of Australia Day, which is, uh, a drinking holiday, if I'm not mistaken, um, and, uh, they made a pool, a pool floaty, and, uh, that's, it, you can, you can win it from the Microsoft Xbox... Australian Facebook page if you're in Australia and oh, you send I really them. Want this. I think it's in 25 words or less what you love about Australia Day. Uh, by the time you see this video, you probably it's probably they're all gone or we gotta, we gotta get a lot deflated or something. Uh, they have these images here that show you all the different things you can do with it. As you can see, you can float on it and swim, kick around, swim a little bit. You can pose with a friend and the and controller, or just by yourself on the side of the pool, or you can get back in the pool. You can have two of them if you both win. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if they're selling them or what. I just, I love that, the, like, as far as I know, Microsoft Australia is just like, they're making weird wordplay and just like, hey, I have a question. Inventing things there. That, that picture in the upper left, is that one man or two men and one of them is getting dragged by a shark? You know, <laughs> these jokes, they might get old for Australians, but 
we still think they're funny. Yeah. Then again, our country's on fire in a different sort of way. So that's uh, so crazy. They 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 totally nailed. That's exactly my body up there on the right. Yeah, that's what that's what um, that's what we look like that's exactly underneath all me. these sweaters we wear because it's winter here. <laughs> anyway, what's your favorite continent? What? Yes. Look at those muscles. You only have seven to choose from. Uh, the thing in the upper left looks like that weird uh, boomerang controller that they were teasing for PS3 for a little bit. Remember that? I missed that thing. That yeah. weird, weird sil silver banana. That's, that thing is still smaller than the Duke, though. That's oh, nice. yeah. That's I love nice. when you say the Duke. The Duke. Um, okay, so uh, Bloodborne is one of your favorite games of ever? Probably of all time, yeah. yeah. Um, our pal Marty just went to Japan recently, and yep. he came back. Uh, I don't know what he did. He just he had that big beard. And he just you know rambled around, and uh, he came. Ooh, ooh, that was that was kind of sexy. Like that's, uh, ooh, that top let's off. take this party downstairs, <laughs> boys. Um, yeah, this drop is, your trousers. <laughs> this is Bloodborne official artworks. Um, this is an art book that is out in Japan right now. Yep, uh, it is. Gorgeous. It's um, really cool. You showed this to me and I started flipping through it. And uh, for those of you not in the know, I'm a, a gigantic baby. I'm not good at the games. Yeah. I have not got good at them. But you uh, do love creepy ass art. I world. love monsters. And I really want to play Bloodborne for the, the sake of all these nasty men, yep. these dirty things. Look at this this weird like decanter thing. Yeah, so this is twenty or forty four ninety nine actually. It's coming to America May twenty third. So yeah. you can import it now, and as you can see, not a ton of Japanese text. Yeah. Um, some here and there, but... It's probably just changing the labels and stuff. Yeah. I think it's even... This might not even be... Yeah, it actually, it, it's... This is in English, so you can read about as much as there is to read in here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's on Amazon right now uh, for 30 bucks. $29. Yeah. Uh, like... We frequently speak out against pre-ordering because it's, you know, it's bad form and you might get, you might get ruined by it, but... Uh, yeah. If you like Bloodborne and art and looking at pictures, get this book. Because yeah. it kicks ass. It's really nice. It's, it's bound really well. I love the... Ew, um, eggs. Yeah, there's Look at a lot these of... nasty eggs. So I had, a weird thing, Ew. I had a weird thing reading this book where I got like angry at parts of it because I was like, oh, that damn spider killed me a thousand times. I hate that little rat. Ooh, vape pens. Oh, beautiful. My Dickensian vape pen collection. Yeah. Uh, they have some really cool quotes in here, too. Uh, I Such like as... Uh, which is yeah. what that one horse that was made out of mops said. We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood. So anyway, this book is available right now, and you can buy it with your own money, and it's a really good time. Yeah, and tell your English teacher it has more words in it. Yeah, and then tell you can your use art it for teacher SSR. that he can't draw as good as that book. Yeah. And tell my history teachers and language teachers they really screwed up. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's the end of that segment of the show. What yeah. do we have next? Uh, we played, uh, no wait, we haven't no. gotten to that part yet. Yeah. Um, so the opposite of Bloodborne, as everyone knows, <laughs> is Monopoly. Oh, Monopoly, right. a game that's been around since the Great Depression. It's a game where a uh, dog can buy the railroads and you land on a question mark and they take away your clothes. Why? I don't, I don't understand this game. I've been playing it for years. I hate it, but I love it. Yeah. I don't know why. I get together with my family at, at times and we play this game and I just leave angry. Yeah. The last time I played this game, I, I owned all four trains and nothing else. I like a sick hobo. So, Brian, aside from changing the rules entirely or playing a different game, yeah. how would you change Monopoly? That's right, you'd change the tokens. Didn't even answer that. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> um, so, Monopoly and the fine folks at Hasbro are doing a wacky thing right now called Token Madness. They've uh -huh. lost their minds. So, like, um, Reefer Madness? Pretty much. They've been uh, token too much. Um, make but it yeah, rain, make it rain. Basically, you've got the classic tokens here. You've got the stupid top hat, the dumb little old shoe. You've got that weird dog that probably has diseases. There's the Battleship starring Rihanna and uh, Chris Hemsworth's brother. There's the Thimble. Is that a Every cat? Wow, did they change the Thimble? Well, that's a weird different thimble from the one I had. There's the wheelbarrow, which nobody uses anymore. Uh, move the camera, Dan. They can't see the cool pieces. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then there's the cat. More recently, the cat used to be an iron, but it was one of those weird old-timey irons that you had to put in the fireplace because right. you burned coal and whatever. Also, I like that the... Um, the no one, no the, one knows what that is anymore. The boot just looks like a middle finger from here. That's yeah. weird. It's a shoe, I assure you. There we go. I assure you. Um, so anyway, basically, they've, they've just like... They're like, how do we make Monopoly trendy again? I don't... I don't know. So they're having people vote on what the token should be. Yeah. They have put up uh, 64 tokens. This is what they all look like together. This is all of them. They're basically based on emoji. Um, there's all kinds of crap here. There's like a jet ski. Is that a rabbit? Yeah, a there's, a rabbit. there's a dinosaur? There's a dinosaur. Wait, there's two dinosaurs. There's two dinosaurs. There's sunglasses. Oh my god, there's aviators. Calm down. Calm down. I really like okay, aviators. Yeah. As you can see, there's stuff like monster trucks and bread. What? Uh, there's really no style guide here. I feel like the old stuff was kind of like, here's some household objects and things your aunt might like. Um, but yeah, we've got some of the new pieces here. Uh, I like that they're doing this for 2017, trying to modernize. Here's a hot new thing you might have heard of. It's called the CRT television. 
one of the hottest devices this holiday season. Then there's a Formula One car. Um, sure, why not? Uh, I like this one, the gold watch. Yes. The rubber duck. This is a weird one. It doesn't really look like it's what it's supposed to be, but it's a bunny slipper. Uh, I don't like it one bit at all. Uh, and then they've designed these these nasty emoji. This one's an emoji based on the, the Monopoly man. He's got that little mustache like the Pringles dude. And then there's a penguin. But yeah, basically, if you go to uh, votemonopoly.com, you can vote on these stupid golden things. And uh, on World Monopoly Day, which apparently is a holiday in 2017, that's March 19th, they're going to tell you what the new pieces that your little cousin's going to choke on are called. And then they're going to put out new versions of the game that totally retcon the entire Monopoly universe in August. There's, so There's no Monopoly universe. You're damn right there isn't. Though Ridley Scott was talking about a Monopoly this, movie. I, I just want to point out, this is very cute. This is the closest I've ever felt to, to, to being a dad. Where like a kid comes in and he's like, I have a duck and a TV and a chair <laughs> and a ring and bread. And they're my toys and my friends. But they're trying to take away the cat and turn him into a dinosaur. And I'm like, that's nice. Anyway, I do kind of, I think that it's it's stupid. They should just do like a thing at this point. There, there are like officially branded Monopoly games of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea of Monopoly Shuffle where they take all of the IPs they've made official Monopoly games of and they just scramble them. And obviously the board is still going to be the same. It's going to have the same numbered values. But I like the idea that you've got like overlapping. You've got like, I don't know, Green Bay Packers, Star Wars, Dora the Explorer, Nicktoons. And then the pieces are like, ah, the Penguin and the, the Watch and Boba Fett. And you're just like, what is this game? It's just nonsense Monopoly. I, uh, I do think it's weird that they have a thimble in there. Yeah. Like, no one uses a thimble. Cosplayers use thimbles. Do they? Probably, when they sew things. I think they use sewing machines. Probably. You can, still, you can still wear thimbles on all your fingers and go up to somebody's plate glass windows and bang on there like a ghost. Anyway, speaking of ghosts, we played a game about them that isn't good at all. It's real bad. Let's it's take very a bad. look. Hey everyone, it's Brian and Max from Up at Noon. And boy, did we find a weird, strange little wonder of a game this week. I believe the expression is, who boy. Yeah. Uh, we're playing Joe's Diner, which is a survival horror Five Nights in Freddy style game uh, on <sighs> PS4. Yeah. And it is about a diner that was built on an ancient native burial ground. Yep. And two chieftains are haunting the restaurant. And if you make too much noise cleaning the tables... They'll get you. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we actually skipped over the very long introduction that explains that you're not a regular employee here. You're actually filling in for somebody's vacation shift, which is entirely, like, way too much information. It's the plot to Kiefer Sutherland's movie Mirrors. So I press the X button to pick up the leftovers. I'm yeah. now using the right stick to look. They won't let Again, you walk yet. this is a file that I loaded. So I now have five All types right. of trash. So... Five five types of trash should have been the name of this game. See, so right, there's so the don't, sound. Don't, don't turn on anything, apparently. Can't run. I'm gonna pick, who's who's drinking full Slurpees in this? Can you pick it up? I think I'm full of trash. You're full of trash. Probably. Okay. Ooh, a vacuum cleaner, but that makes a lot of noise. What? Whose house is this? I don't care. Okay. Where do I dump the? Go Why is this a like? This is a huge place. Joe's Diner is pretty big. Jo What's making the noise? So I gotta go find whatever's making the Something's noise. Something's making the noise. I can't run. It was okay. the TV. Did someone turn the TV on? I have to go in the kitchen and throw away all these Slurpee cups that the teens left here. So wait, the ghost did the ghost turn on the TV so he could be mad at the sound? Yes. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. This game Where's, is bad. Where is the tra there's the trash? Okay. So this game is about garbage. Yeah. Also, it's not leftovers if it's a full cup of Slurpee, which they don't sell in diners. Yes. This game is not made by people who live around diners or Native American burial grounds. This is true. Why don't um, you just throw out the TV remote? Can you pick that up now? Okay. Good. We got that. Wait, why does it say times four? What's it? Oh, the damn TV went on again. Okay. Well. Okay. That's what? I can't even hear what's... Something's whirring. Ice machine, maybe? Ice machines do make a lot of noise. Come on. Go. I'm stuck on the counter. This is not scary at all. At all. It's actually going to get less scary when the thing happens, which we already saw once. Um, is it the ice machine? Yeah. Yes. I don't even know how that... Like, what did I do? Did I bang it? just it? turned on because of g g g ghosts So I have to go find... What is that, radio? An, old, an old-timey radio? That no. doesn't help me at all. That's... What? Do they have a stuffed cat? Yeah. Sick. 
It's noisy. Make sure it's quiet. Otherwise, the ghosts will get upset and come out. You know what? I don't, I don't care. I'm going to go in the ladies' room. You can't even tell. I'm not afraid of you, ghost. I'm not even afraid of getting walked in on by a lady. This game, uh, I'm going to blow your mind real quick. This game is $20. 20 bucks. There's a, there's a whole slew of games you could buy instead of this. Hold on. It sounded like you were close to it. Was it that... Is it what? a cell phone? What in oh, the there's a cell phone in the other room. Yeah, but someone's also slurping. Someone's doing no, a No, that's a radio. You sure? This Sounds game is terrible. Oh, it's the coffee machine. You turn it off? Okay. Yeah. This? Like this? Modem? Yes. Yep. So, for those of okay. you just tuning in, we're playing Joe's Diner, a game where you Don't. can do all kinds of stuff like this. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Can you throw what that crab away? You can't do anything with a crab. Also, if you're in a what? Uh, if you're in a diner that's on Native American burial ground, I don't think they'd have whole crabs just sitting out. Uh, the phone is talking again. The annoying, awful phone. Okay, this, this is. Let's throw out all the garbage. You want to just make a ton of noise and get the ghost to come after yeah, us? Let's let's make some noise. Turn uh, on let everything. Me, let me turn. Let me just touch the fridge and have it start making noises. Turn on the crab. Put that little whistler on. Put the jukebox on out there. Just take those old records off the shelf. You gotta make sure it's quiet. Otherwise no, the I don't. Will come out. No, I do not. You know what? Wait, what? Says who? You have to repeat the night shift? That doesn't make any sense. That's not game over. You just have to do your job better. Okay, all right. We're going I've back in. I've worked a graveyard shift. This sucks. This is a real, 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 real bad also, game. Also, I want to point out how many save files they think you might possibly need for this There's game. There's like a hundred. Are you kidding me? Who made okay. this game? All right. Go back in one more time. Let's okay. load the game. Let's see if we can get the the the, oh, the haunted chieftain. I don't want to leave you guys hanging to not see the chieftain. Got to see that chieftain. That's the the main hook of this game. Uh, in Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's has uh, those, those bears. robot bears that those come big on and attack bears you. Bears come out of the walls or whatever. So what is this? Those games. What does this game have? Let's find. Let's find out. Does it even tell me what time it is? Oh, it's gonna make you go through all of this tutorial again. Yeah. This is a turd. This is a real <laughs> wet turd. This is a turd. This is IGN.com. This is turd the wet this sprocket. This is the turd. This is a big turd. This is, is it teaching me? Make sure that it's quiet. Thank you for explaining this game. Grim Feather. Whoa, I got oh. a flashlight? They Whoa. didn't even tell me how to flashlight. That would have made things a lot the same. Yes. Thanks. Does this scare ghosts off? Maybe not. They can don't walk. They don't I can hear. walk. So last time we played this, I the no type of turn on the jukebox. Oh, you're getting that cheese. Oh, that's a whole burger it's like and fries. Fun. You're wasting food. Wasting food. All right, All right. we got to throw this entire burger in the trash because somebody didn't want to eat it. Oh, there's more back here. That's it. That's actually really spooky on its own. But you can only carry one trash at the same time. Yeah. That's because you're holding the flashlight with the other hand. It's like Doom 3. Max, I don't like this game one bit. This is a real big pile All right, of food. All right, I think we need to turn on the record player. Let's hear those top 40 hits. Who likes pina colada? What is that song? Oh, it's the music. <laughs> that old classic, the jam. Oh, and the cell phone's going off, too. Coffee machine's going off. We're Wait, making noise. the ghost is going to come out. Here comes the ghost. Where's the ghost? It's too noisy. It is too noisy. Make the ghost quiet. I'm going to hide in the corner so it can't sneak up on me. Put the phone on. Where's, Where's the, the ghost? ghost? Come on, Where's ghost. the ghost? Come Where's on the ghost? Out. Come not on, Mr. Ghost. I'm not afraid of you. Where is that ghost? Where's the ghost? Where is he? Come on. Oh, the picture of the chieftain. That's this game. Don't spend $20 on this game because it's not good. They send a picture of a clip art Native <laughs> American man after you. Real bad. <laughs> Video games. Spend money wisely. Welcome back. We're sorry we subject you to that. Uh, what, what on earth was that game? Like, what... Every single week, uh, we read The Drop, which is written by Brian Clements over at the PlayStation blog. Shout out, shout out, shout out, plug, plug, plug. And uh, they talk about all the new games coming to PS4, which is, you know, the console we play most of our games on. Yeah. We found this one. We said we got to play it. And the more we dug, the deeper the poop was. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a good game. Yeah, so um, fun fact... Uh, my uh, my sewage pump in my home exploded this week, and the small compartment it lives in in my home was filled with feces. That was uh, less of a terrible part of my week than playing <laughs> that game for seven minutes was. Uh, anyway. The um, reviews are in. Yeah. Here's what IGN had to say about that game. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, we got uh, a bunch of action figures. If you didn't know that, we do. 
Uh, but we got a bunch more. Um, Marvel Legends is going to be turning, I think, 15 or 16 this year. If you're unfamiliar, they were they are some of the most articulated action figures around. They kind of set the trend for real posable toys um, coming out of America. Uh, they were originally made by Toy Biz, which was owned by Marvel, and then they got bought by Hasbro a while back. And Hasbro's been chipping away at them and making all kinds of weird superheroes and supervillains and stuff. And um, they're great. And the latest line I'm really happy with, they are, uh, I believe it's, Wave five of Spider-Man-based characters, uh, and we've got all of them here. Uh, and these are these are toys you can get pretty much anywhere. They got them at you know Toys R Us, they got them at Walmart, Target, all those normal places on Amazon, whatever. Um, and they do the whole build a figure thing, where basically each figure comes with a separate piece. In this case, you can assemble Sandman, um, that got, that old Flint Marco man who comes with a, a cool brick that he can hit Spider-Man with, or a funny ball. It's very odd, and you know, he could pop out his hands. So and I really like this build a fig thing. We didn't really have this a lot when we were kids, buying action figures. Marvel, I... Marvel Legends kind of, uh, I think, kind of popularized it. Really? The only thing I remember doing it before Marvel Legends, and I could be wrong here, was um, Metal Gear Solid 2. Right. It came with pieces for Metal Gear Ray, and you built them all together. Oh, that's awesome. Um, See, I really dig that. It, it's odd if, like, if you can only afford one toy, then you get, like, Sandman's arm. Yeah. I and had that's a, a weird thing that comes with Spider-Man <laughs> or whatever. But. I, ha I have a Nightcrawler that came with Galactus's ass, so I have Galactus's ass in a box somewhere, and I'm like, maybe someday I'll get the rest of him, but I haven't. I feel like you're the perfect type of guy to have Galactus's ass in a box for Galact a while. Galactus. Um, but yeah, these are, these are pretty cool. Um, you've got uh, the Shocker here, who's kind of the... Um, Funnily named uh, sort of knockoff of Electro, who's mm -hmm. uh, you know he showed up in the 80s and 90s. Uh, there's the Spider Multiverse or whatever. There's this Spider UK, who's the British uh, British funny boxing uh, you know pub fight Spider Man. Uh, you might not have seen him camouflaged on this desk, but there's black costume Spider Man who is super duper posable, real incredible fun, incredible figure. I, I put him in like B boy po poses yeah. before. It was great. You kept putting these guys in real dirty poses. You made it so that. Um, uh, what is it? You got Spider-Man 2099 over here. You made him do uh, very dirty sex stuff with uh, with the extra head that um, Sandman came with, who's what? making this screaming face. Don't tell them that. Yeah, I'm not supposed to talk about stuff like that on the show because we had that talking to in that conference room. That's what I do um, with my toys. Yeah, cool. and then of course we've got Kamala Khan, who's kind of a popular character right now. Uh, she's Miss Marvel. She's basically got Mr. Fantastic powers, and she's. Um, do you know anything about this character? I know that her hands terrify me, and I want to vomit. So you love a, a woman with large. A stretchy cylindrical hands. No, I actually don't. That's actually the opposite of the type of women that I would ever love. So she's fun because she's kind of like, um, you know how Deadpool is aware that he's in the Marvel Universe? Yeah. She's kind of like, she's not aware that she's in the Marvel Universe, but she is a fan of people in the Marvel Universe, even though she's in it. So she meets other superheroes and she freaks out and has like a whole like, you know, dorky moment. What are you doing? What it's her it? little pet, yeah. little pet spider boy. No, she'd be all excited. She'd be like, oh my God, Spider-Man, I love your I love your. So yeah, how costume. much do these cost? These are 15, 20 bucks. You can find them wherever. Um, I really like this line. They got an X-Men line coming out soon that has Dazzler, the a disco pop artist who comes with, you know, roller skates and cool like, you know, light waves. She shoots at people. I really like this Green Goblin figure. I'm talking about this for a second. Look at this. Ah, Spider-Man. Ah. And uh, some of them have little cool uh, notches in their backs so that if you want to pose them, um, you know, doing some crazy, uh, you know, hoverboard poses like this, you can do that. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. So Marvel Legends, if you want to get into action figure collecting and you like the, you like the X-Men or the, you know, the X-Force or the Spider-Boys or the Avengers or whatever they're called, you know, head on down to your local toy place and check these guys out. Also, quick pro tip. They sell these toys at Walgreens, too. So if you're ever there for, like, some, you know, stupid garbage you need for your apartment, like, I don't know, dryer sheets or something, and you just take a quick whimsy down the toy aisle, you'll make yourself feel a little bit better. Yeah. I was, uh, I was in a Walgreens over Christmas break pr picking up, a, like, a, a photograph that we got printed for my grandmother, and I was like, this is the worst thing to ever do. I hate doing this. This kind of stuff sucks. And I turned around the corner, and there was a Black Series C-3PO action figure. So I bought him, and then I got a picture for my grandmother. Yeah. And everyone was happy. And if you need to hang a picture and you can't find a hammer, just get all these action figures and build your yourself a Sandman. That, uh, that hurts. That really hurt. That, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. You've got a sensitive forehead, you idiot. I have no hair. Oh, hair is the the head's padding. You big dork. All right, let's get all these right. guys out of here. Max, we got a present in the mail this week. Yeah. Uh, we like to unbox these, so we're going to do it again. This is the Star Wars Smuggler's Bounty Box. They come out, I believe, every month, right? Yeah. Uh, um, and this, obviously, from Funko. So uh, we're going to dig right into it. You can order this on their website. Uh, pretty much same issue every single time. You get some patches, you get some pins, and you get some Funkos inside and some other cool stuff. So right off the bat, what'd you get? A little Lando? Lando Cal Cal Calrissian pin. Um, they, they're doing something now that I'm actually really excited about. Um, for a while, I feel like, I might be imagining this, but I feel like their patches kind of said like, they said like Smuggler's Bounty on them, or they said like, they were kind of trading card-like, and yeah. same with the patches and the pins. This one, 
It just has Yoda on it, and it just says Empire Strikes Back, which is kind of nicely, like, kind of just generic, you know? Oh, I love that. Like, I like that it doesn't, you know, advertise too much what it is. Um, and then, of course, you got, uh, you know, your little guide here. Um, you're a big fan of Tauntauns. Yeah. So here's a nice, uh, a nice Funko Tauntaun. Oh my god, I'm gonna open this. Um, this is great. Typically they come with a t-shirt, but in this case we got a nice pair of socks, which I think are great. I like socks. I like fun socks. I wear fun socks all the time. These you little wear Darth Funko socks? I don't yet, but I might be wearing these soon. Now you will. Those are cute. I like yeah. those a lot. And they get all stretched out and weird looking. Can I have one? You can have, we can have friendship <laughs> socks. Here. And when you think about me, you can they put a sock in your hand and say, Max, I miss you. And I could be like, hi, Brian. Nice to see you, too. Is that weird for you? You could also use it to polish your old head. <laughs> what is this show? I don't know. It's a good time. Ow! That was really loud. Yeah. Uh, so it comes with everyone's favorite character from Empire Strikes Back, the Ice Rock. Can you cut the Tauntaun open? No, you can't. No, there's no, uh, there's no like, cloaca for Luke Skywalker to hide in there. Stop saying that word. I say that word at least three times a week. Okay, so this I love. I absolutely love. Uh, and they do a cool thing too. Let me see. Is it in, in the box somewhere? What is it? They, they sort of give you a quick like uh, behind the scenes on how it's they design right this here thing. somewhere. Yeah. So it'll show you some prototype images and some stuff like that. Sort of, you know, here's how it looked unpainted before they just sort of put it all together. Um, he uh, actually doesn't come off of the Tauntaun, but it's still a really. There's cool not a thing. life on this rock to fill a space cruiser. Anyway, I'm gonna go look around in the snow. This is great. It's like a whole little Empire Strikes yeah. Back kit. Anyway, his head doesn't really turn, but yeah. Um, yeah. So Funko does good stuff with that. Um, I like that they're doing the kind of targeted boxes, and obviously, if you if you have a thing you like, whether it is uh, you know nerd stuff or Star Wars or DC or Marvel, they have different ones for all those. Yeah. Um, Funko also has a bunch of sort of sidelines. Um, they've got the sort of reaction figures, which are done in kind of retro Kenner style. Uh, one of the most recent things that they're rolling out, uh, they are partnering with Playmobil. Um, so Ooh. Funko and Playmobil are teaming up, and they're going to be doing kind of pop culture themed Playmobil figures, which. Sounds awesome. We've got a couple of them here. Um, they have Ninja Turtles ones. Yeah. Uh, you've got Shredder, you've got Leo, you've got Mikey, you've got an Entertainment Earth exclusive Raphael. That's really cool. Now, I want to point out real quick, I think one of the thing, the reason that this line makes sense is because uh, Playmobil, which I collected as a kid or bought a lot of as a kid, that's the basic sets, uh, like Castle, Pirates, yeah, and sure. like that. They also have that sort of like beady, dead-eyed looking yep. thing that Funko Pops have. <laughs> ah, children love dead-eyed things. The beady, <laughs> dead-eyed <laughs> children. The Funko Pops or the Lego yeah. or the Playmobil. Um, they've also got Back to the Future and Ghostbusters. Take a look here. Um, these are cool. I love that Marty. He's got the little skateboard and everything. Yeah, these are awesome. Uh, that Doc Brown's hair is kind of weird. It looks it looks more like, um, I don't know, it looks like, uh, what's this, Dudley Moore kind of. Yeah, it very, does look very, like Dudley Moore. Weird. Anyway, uh, they've also got uh, Willy Wonka. Ooh. Yeah, and the Oompa Loompa and some different Doctor Whos. Now, these are, in theory, so cool. But the big problem is the scale. What? They are 200% scale Playmobil figures. So they are six inches tall. And if you're familiar with Playmobil, all of those, excluding the one they have out front of the toy store to tell you they sell Playmobil, are three inches tall. They, are, they have a scale. But for some reason, they're like, let's do six inch tall ones. And... I mean, it seems like a stupid thing to complain about, but no, having, it's it, not. having it in this style is like such a great idea because there's a whole universe and there's a bunch of things out there you can make them play along with. Obviously, they already make a ton of ghosts. They make haunted house play sets. So you could have the Ghostbusters show up and play with that. You could get those for your dumb well, not kids. Now, now it'd just be a very small ghost. Yeah, that'd be fight. really weird. They have a tiny ghost and these giant men show up and they start beating up the ghosts together. That's terrible. Uh, and then obviously, you know, the Ninja Turtles could bust the safe robbers, but they'd be like stopping a bunch of children from opening the safe, and that'd be <laughs> creepy. And this one, I'm really sad about, we could have called the SWAT team to put an end to Willy Wonka and his child-murdering factory of sweets. I love that they do have Playmobil SWAT teams. I don't know, but like, they have they have fire stations, they got like yep. ambulances, you could, you could do custom Ghostbusters stuff. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing about Playmobil is they do make vehicles, they do make play sets, the scale is perfect for it. And it this this really like, bums me out, Max, because yeah. it's, it's one of those things where I love Playmobil, I grew up with them, I also grew up with stuff like Ghostbusters, Willy Wonka, and Back to the Future, so all this stuff coming together is amazing. It's sort of like when we first heard about Lego Star Wars happening, I was like, I love Lego, I love Star Wars, this makes sense. And what if they were like, but wait, the minifigs are this tall. Yeah. I'd be like, that's Why? not Lego. Yeah. That's not Lego. So like it's just it's it's just a giant I don't understand this. Like yeah. I don't understand this. I mean, I think it's for people who are more casual collectors, unlike people like us who have serious brain damage and want to reenact weird uh like SVU episodes they invented in their brains where yeah. the entire SWAT team shows up to a factory and Gene Wilder's in there and he's like, you'll never catch me and he gets in his great glass elevator and goes into space. Um now Gene Wilder will have to fight dozens of Lilliputian cops. Yeah. 
You know, that's the thing is he eats the, the embiggening candy and becomes the largest boy ever. And then he says, ah, the Laffy Taffy. I've got the last laugh now. Anyway, those come out uh, this summer. They're 15 bucks a pop. I'm still going to probably kind of a buy, bummer. I'm gonna yeah, buy the Willy Wonka one. Yeah, it's just anyway. I complain and then that's what yeah. I do with my money. Just take my stupid wallet and step on it and put it in underneath a tractor. Yeah. Uh, Tractors, the best way to destroy a wallet this year. I've said enough today, but uh, you know who didn't say nearly enough in 2016 was women in some of the most popular movies. Now, a website called Free Code Camp, put together uh, by this writer, Amber Thomas, it's an amazing, amazing piece that I've been geeking out about the last few days, about all of the highest grossing films of 2016, many of which had strong female leads and strong female roles, and actually doing a breakdown of the script of how much each one of those women actually spoke. Now, I'm gonna cut you off real quick because as you can see, we are two men yep. and we're having this conversation, so we're gonna get this out of the way right also, now. Also, can I just, can I, sorry, real quick. Um, this is wonderful because it's entirely data. Yeah. This isn't a bunch of like opinion or speculation. Yes. This is like hard data that's like, Maybe there is a lack of equality here. Yes. Go on. This is just data. This is just a breakdown. Uh, they did visual infographics. So it starts with this great quote, which I really love from Amber. She says, movie trailers in 2016 promised viewers so many strong female characters, Jen Erso, Dory, Harley Quinn, Judy Hopps, Wonder Woman. I felt like this could be the year for gender equality in Hollywood's biggest films. I was wrong. And I don't make this statement lightly. Amber Thomas, FreeCodeCamp.com. Yeah. Um, so uh, what she did here is she basically watched all of these movies and did a script breakdown of who said what and who said what where and when. Now, a lot of these movies did have strong female leads. And I will say real quick, quick caveat, um, you can have a strong female-led movie without her talking the entire time. Sometimes actions are as powerful as words, yeah. right? There's One thing that to comes that. to mind is obviously uh, Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2. Yeah. He's like famous because he got paid something like $2,600 per syllable or something yeah. like that. And he Which said like nothing. 187 words in that movie, yeah. but everyone thinks of him when that comes up. Yeah, he said nothing yeah. in that movie and made tons of money. And then you look at uh, the actual, you know, the, 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 the female lead in that in that film is dominating the movie yeah. and kicking ass and didn't make nearly as much. So, um... It's kind of an interesting scenario. Now, if you look at like the posters and stuff like that, you look at stuff like Suicide Squad, which was sort of equal in the way it presented people, but obviously very much pushing on Harley Quinn. Yeah. You look at Rogue One, uh, Jin Erso, front and center. So let's take a look at the actual infographics here, which I hope you can see. Um, so Amber did this breakdown using, again, just numbers. Now, Rogue One, you would think, strong female-led movie there. The, the, the pink, every time you see pink here, is the amount of times a female spoke in the movie. Now this is just dialogue, and this is the balance of gender equality. Uh, the Jungle Book is an interesting one, almost entirely blue. They actually wrote in a female character into that movie, uh, as Scarlett Johansson played the snake. That's not something that was ever in the original. There's actually no women in the original. Um, Suicide Squad, again, you think it's like, you have Harley Quinn, you have uh, the sort of, I, I forget the Viola Davis's character. Mm -hmm. Amanda Waller. Um, really cool character, probably one, one of my favorite parts of that movie. Didn't say a whole lot compared to, I don't know, Rope Guy and uh, Will Smith. Yeah, like, thankfully, Rope Guy didn't say a whole lot. Yeah, he just Batman climbed v that building and exploded. Batman v Superman, really interesting quote here. Uh, they say that basically Batman talked almost twice as much as Superman and six times more than Wonder Woman. Now, again, not a Wonder Woman movie. If Wonder Woman comes out and men speak more than women do in Wonder Woman, we might have some problems. So uh, can you pull this uh, up real quick? I think it's really important to note that uh, not one of the top ten movies, again, these are quotes from Amber, uh, of 2016, had a 50% speaking female cast. Only one of 2016's top 10 movies had 50% dialogue by a female character. Finding Dory and Zootopia, which are cartoons, were the only two movies in 2016's top 10 in which a female character had the most dialogue. Female characters were outnumbered in Captain America's Civil War's final battle, five to one. Throughout the movie, they only contributed 60% of the dialogue. Um, Really, really crazy stuff here. Yeah. Really crazy stuff yeah. here. And I mean, I, I just want to, again, you know, poke some holes in the irony that it's, you know. Yes, two men talking hey, about this. Hey, sorry. I yeah, I know. It. Also, hi, comments. I know. We're yeah, a bunch we're of SJW, SJW cucks yeah, and hipsters it, and all sorry. that. Whatever. whatever we can do. And he's but bald. But no, it's just, and yeah, and I'm bald. And I look like Homer and he looks like Ace Ventura. We get it, you know. Yeah. Smoking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so all that is out on the table now. Where do things go from here? I think that um, we spent the last few years sort of saying representation is important. We looked at Marvel movies. Marvel movies are in a weird spot. DC movies are in a real spot, a weird spot because they are based on drawings that men made 60, 50 yeah, years ago. but it's changing. You it's know, changing. It's shifting. And it's getting better. Yeah. So I think that uh, we are at a point now where we are seeing more representation from women on the front covers of, of movies, uh, in major badass roles, kicking ass. Jen Erso was awesome. Harley Quinn was even pretty cool in a lot of stuff she did. Um, 
We are not there yet in terms mm -hmm. of like actually writing for these characters. So they're there, they just need more cool stuff to say. I think they're doing a lot of cool stuff, So, um, but we're getting there, baby steps. I don't want to make this entirely negative. I don't want to be like, yeah. oh, Hollywood sucks, because we saw some awesome stuff this in, in 2016, and we'll see even more awesome stuff in 2017. I mean, uh, Star Wars Episode Eight is a, a, a trilogy centered around Rey who is an awesome female character, who spoke a lot in Force Awakens, will obviously and hopefully get even more as she's training with Luke Skywalker. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff. Wonder Woman's coming this year. Um, so let's see. Let's yeah. see what happens. It's getting better. Uh, and we still got some ways to go, but I like where it's heading. Yeah. We got a yeah. new Alien movie coming out this year, too. That's which right. Is, which is good news. Um, I, Ellen Ripley is like one of my favorite just badass female characters. Yeah. Like she's great. She fights a bunch of aliens, and she's, she's cool and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aliens is an awesome movie. Um, one, of the, one of my favorite things about it is the, the technology in that movie. You get all these kind of weird, like, you know, you get the power loader, which is basically a glorified forklift. You get pulse rifles and everything. And then, of course, there is the smart gun, which is this really kind of odd-looking thing. Um, there's a company called Hollywood Collectibles Group, which just released a replica for it, or it's, it's kind of on the way. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, this is what the smart gun looks like. It looks like something you'd use in Metal Shop, maybe, or, like, to put on, like to put bubble wrap packing in boxes at the Amazon warehouse. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've got this this uh, replica coming out. Wow. Um, and it's it's huge, it's a big it's a big thing. This is of course a replica of uh, Vasquez's um, smart gun. She's the, she's the cool lady who does pull ups and makes fun of Bill Paxton. Um, I never been crazy about this design. I was like the pulse rifle better, but it's kind of funny how it's got that like, it's got that weird kind of dirt bike grip at the back. Uh, it's got like yeah. a headphone jack in the corner there. Um, there's something really raw and cool about the weaponry in these movies. Yeah, the design in in, in Cameron's you know Aliens world is is wonderful. Um, what I love though is the thing that it was mounted on in real life was a steady cam rig, which is what you use to carry two cameras and be cool like this guy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this uh, this replica will cost you twelve hundred dollars. Wow. Which is kind of funny because I feel like to build a replica using the actual parts that were used to build the actual thing in the first movie. Uh, it'd probably come out cheaper. Oh, uh, definitely, yeah. But I think it's like, we talk about this a lot, and I think it's like, you know, there's a select group of people that are sort of born with artistic talent or learn it yeah. or train for it. Some people just want to throw money at it and be like, I yeah. want the smart gun. Totally. Like, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of things where I'm just like, I, I'm like, I could cook tonight or I could press a button on my phone and food, good food will show up. Yeah. Here. Maybe I can make it better and cheaper at home, but $1,200, different kind of scenario there, but it looks awesome. Yeah. I think it's really cool. No, it's badass. I just, I don't know. I wanted to throw some love to that. Um, yeah. But also, if you want to get, uh, if you want to get the smart gun and you want to build the full costume and you got to get the whole, uh, you got to get the steady cam rig. Additionally, that's going to cost you a whole lot because that's an actual thing that people use to make films like this guy. I really just want to show that picture repeatedly. Yeah, he's really good. Look at that guy. Like, yeah. imagine walking into, like, an old Wild West saloon and be like, Stick him up, boys! You're in a documentary about the Wild West! Hey, I, I asked for all Reach the milk. for the sky! And yeah. hold it right there, we're gonna do a quick pickup. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was up at noon for this week. Yeah. Uh, oh, we got one more little thing we forgot to open. Oh, yeah, this is stupid. We got a friend, a uh, present from our friend John Carl in yeah. LA. Yeah, for uh, a little bit of context here, uh, we were in a short film by our pal uh, Danny, who yeah. uh, works for a company Isma called Ismahawk. Isma yeah. um, he makes incredible fan films. He made like a Nightwing TV series where he got in like actual crime fighting shape, and I think he actually went out and beat real criminals up. Uh, he made a short film which a bunch of pals, Anthony Carboni, Greg Miller, are in it. Um, it's Voltron versus Power Rangers, and we and got it's live action. Yeah, it's really awesome. We pounded shots with him at Comic Con, and we cornered him, and we were like, "We want to be Bulk and Skull in your in your short film," and he's like, "Please leave me alone." <laughs> and okay, that's fine. And we got to be Bulk and Skull in this movie. Um, go check it out. It's on YouTube. Yep. Just look up Power Rangers versus Voltron. It kicks ass. Our pal John Carl helped coordinate this whole thing, and he sent us something that I. He really said, "Max and Brian, I already had these ready to send your way, but listening to Beyond 473 and the mention of the Power Rangers project, we all worked in together. I knew I had to get these rushed your way." Beyond John Carl, thank you. John Carl. These are awesome. Yeah. These are so cool. So I remember having some of these as a little kid. Uh, they're just little figurines, uh, collectible figures, series two. Um, so they make some of the villains and stuff like that. You want to check out the backs of the cards. Um, I love these so much because, Max, we finally have action figures of ourselves. Yeah, pretty much. You got a fat guy in a leather jacket and like a weird whimsical <laughs> dude with long I hair. I have yellow shoes <laughs> and weird hair. These are the best. Yeah. Uh, I get really geeked out seeing old carded action figures from yeah. back in the day because it just makes me really happy that someone kept these in a box. They're in perfect shape. Yeah. Like there's just Except something... for, I mean, I think that Bulk could use it, lose a few pounds. But... Okay. hey -o. You know, I'm working yeah. on it. I'm working on it. Um, anyway, uh, coming up next, IGN Plays Live is happening right after this. We haven't been live this whole time. We're actually in Los Angeles right now. Uh, Los if Angeles. You missed it, uh, tonight, uh, what is it? It's the 19th. 
Yeah. Thursday the 19th on Facebook Live, on IGN.com, on YouTube, on all of our various platforms at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 9.30 Eastern, or do the math wherever else you live in the world. Uh, we are going to be at the red carpet premiere of Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. Um, this is huge. This is like the, one of the coolest gigs we've ever got to work. This is yeah. kind of ridiculous. Yeah. And we're very dumb and over the top and goofy, and these movies are like, they don't take themselves very seriously either. Uh, so you can look for people like Vin Diesel, Samuel L. Jackson, Ruby Rose, uh, Tony Jaw. Uh, yeah. Who else is going to be there? Uh, that's, that's, Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen. That's, it's going to be yeah. awesome. So watch that. We get to interview those guys. I heard there might be like a zip line. It's going to be insane. So if you've ever seen a red carpet premiere, uh, we've never hosted one before, so it's just going to be a fun time for everybody. Let's get all loosey-goosey and have a good time. Yep. Loosey-goosey, have a good time. Real weird telling our moms that we we're going to the LA to be in the Triple X thing. Yeah, they did not understand that. My mom was like, what? You're doing Triple X with Vin Diesel? That doesn't yeah. sound like a good thing. I know you've been in California for a long yeah. time. But My fiance said I should try to touch Vin Diesel's butt, and I said, I've seen that film Triple X, and most of the people who try to touch his butt explode in speedboat and or dirt bike accidents. <laughs> so, uh, you know, moral of the story, don't go there. They'll explode in the, in the motorsports. That's anyway, right. thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bup, bup, bup. Oh, he's he's passed out. That's not good. Thanks for watching.